Elimination Chamber 2023 has finished. It has come and gone, and today we are going to be reviewing the show, man. I cannot wait to get into it with you. Sat down, watched the show from start to finish, and I'm here to fill you in on all the things that took place at the show, give you my own personal thoughts and opinions and feelings of this entire show, where I think we're going to go from here. If there's anything worth mentioning, I will be bringing it up in this video, and we're going to find out if Elimination Chamber 2023 was great, was it shitty, was it somewhere in between? We're going to find out here today, man, but let's dive into it. I will give it a letter grade at the end of the show, so let's dive into it. Elimination Chamber 2023, Road to WrestleMania, final stop until we get to Hollywood, baby. Let's get it. All right, guys, so we started things off with the women's version of the Elimination Chamber winner going on to fight Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. Coming in, didn't put a lot of expectations on this matchup. I just have one thing on my mind. I wanted Asuka to win this matchup, and she did. It was, you know, it was a fun matchup. I thought the matchup overall was solid. It wasn't the greatest match of all time, but you had some cool moments. I thought Nikki Cross looked good coming off the top with the Nikki Cross body. We had some different chamber stuff, you know, putting the face through the chamber wall and all those different things. Raquel had some good spots. The final three shocked me. I did not expect it to be Carmella in there, man. I thought Liv Morgan would outlast. She got a, like a double arm bar slash sharpshooter on her. Got her eliminated. She had some cool gear. Raquel's gear was absolutely terrible. I don't know what was going on with that. It looked like half-assed. It looked very generic. But then it was down to Carmella and Asuka, which actually shocked me a lot. But Asuka does get the win. She defeats Carmella there, and I thought that was the right victor. It was a solid match overall. I enjoyed the match. I was entertained the whole way. That's really all you can ask for and I think the right woman won I, I and I honestly believe like uh, more and more as days go by I think Asuka's the greatest women's wrestler of all time I think I can actually sit back and say that with a straight face she's won a chamber she's won a rumble she's won money in the bank but Asuka wins and I have no quarrels about it I, I enjoyed the match it was entertaining and that's all you can ask for next up we had Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar in a matchup I was looking forward to I love Brock Lesnar I enjoy Bobby Trashley from time to time when I was a kid Kid, man, I love Bobby Lashley, man. I really did. And then when I grew up and realized he couldn't even spit a vowel out of a microphone before I wanted to change the channel, kind of hurt him a little bit, but that's besides the point. I just like to think about it and say it. This matchup was, you know, it was your typical Brock Lesnar match. You know, a lot of finishers and suplexes and big money moves, but they they really blue balled us with this and it really upset me, but I'm hoping that the Mania match makes up for it because this is not the end of the feud. Basically, the Hurt Lock was locked in on Brock Lesnar and he took Bobby Lashley to Dick Kick City, and he got disqualified. That is not something I saw coming for this matchup, but unfortunately, that's where we were. That is exactly what took place, and uh, Brock Lesnar lost on disqualification, so Bobby Lashley was declared the winner, and I'm just looking forward to the next matchup. It, it, it really did upset me that they blue-balled us like that, but I'm hoping, again, that WrestleMania, we have an epic clash, maybe a street fight, maybe a last man standing, maybe an I quit match, something, you know, up the, up the ante a little bit, and no appearance from the Hurt Business. Maybe that'll come at Mania, or or maybe we'll have the you know them reform before we get there. But this matchup disappointed me. This was a, this was a disappointing one for me. All right, so up next we had the mixed tag team matchup between Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley going two on two in the mixed tag match with Beth Phoenix and Edge. This this storyline has been going on for a little while now, as we know. But coming into this matchup, man, I was really expecting Rhea Ripley to continue to build upon that momentum that she won at the Royal Rumble or that she obtained at the Royal Rumble. That was not the case in this one. This was not the case at all. But this matchup had the crowd on fire. I don't think that uh, this crowd could be matched. It was unbelievable. I knew that they would be on fire for certain things, but I guess with Edge being a part of this matchup, I mean, they were just losing their minds. I mean, everything that they did, everything that was interacted with in this matchup was unbelievable. I thought that the crowd was super on fire, and this matchup was very entertaining. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I just didn't agree with the winner, I don't think, but I guess they wanted to send the crowd home happy in this scenario, but I don't know, man. Wild ride. Wild ride in this one. I thoroughly enjoyed it, even though Edge and Beth Phoenix won. I, I guess there's not a huge issue with that. Finn Balor did eat the pin, which annoys me just because I love Finn Balor, but at the end of the day, this matchup was enjoyable, and I think that uh, the crowd was on fire for this one. That's that's kind of the thing that stood out to me about this matchup. I like the, the things on the outside that we got. We got some cool storytelling throughout. Just an enjoyable matchup that you, you really can't dock any football points right here, Brad. Next up was our United States Men's Elimination Chamber matchup. Austin Theory defending his championship versus Johnny Gargano, Montez Ford, Seth Rollins, Dan 
Damian Priest and Bronson Reed, and oh my god in heaven, Brad. This matchup was a top three chamber of all time, I think. I, I think I can honestly say that. I think, you know, it is a United States Championship. It's not a big, you know, main world championship, but it felt like it. By God, man. This, I, I going into the matchup, did, you probably remember me saying this has a Triple H feel to it. It's got an NXT, NXT touch to it, man. This reminded me so much of classic black and gold NXT. It was so damn good, man. The wrestling in this, the telling in this was unbelievable. Some of the spots we got from Montez Ford, Johnny Gargano had a fantastic performance, Seth Rollins. I mean, the moments in this matchup between beating up on Theory and the Chamber. And the only thing that was missing from this matchup was a frog splash from the top of the pod. I don't know why they never did that spot. There was multiple opportunities that I thought we were going to get it. We never got it, but Bronson Reed eliminated first after getting single super kick, double super kick, triple super kicked by three different men. You had a bunch of different finishers on him. Johnny Gargano would be eliminated after that. Then it was Damian Priest, and then the final three, which I think I do, I did predict or I fantasy booked, was Montez Ford, Theory, and Seth Rollins. Came down to the final three. Montez got curb stomped and eliminated, and then Montez Ford was kayfabe injured, and while that was happening, the door was left open for Logan Paul to run in, take out Seth Rollins, and Austin Theory retains the championship. We all saw it coming. We all figured it was coming, but it kind of bummed me out. I'm not going to lie to you. I just I, I just can I'm not on the, the way that Logan, like, no lie, Logan Paul is obviously athletic. He's very good in what he does. I think he's, you know, he's pretty good in the ring. I'm not taking any of that away from him, but when he comes out, man, it just reminds me of Kevin Federline back in, like, 06. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it feels like to me. I just don't buy it. I'm not in on it. I don't care what they do with him. I'm not going to back it. I cannot buy into it just because of everything surrounding it. It would be like it would be like any other celebrity coming in, and I don't care how good they are in the ring. I just don't buy it. I don't want them in wrestling, man. I want this for the wrestlers. I want to tell stories with the, with the current talent that has worked their way up into WWE and professional wrestling, and I just can't buy into it. However, it was a damn good match. Great match, man, and I don't even, I don't have an issue with with the finish. I figured it was coming. I knew it was coming, and it still didn't really affect the entire outcome of the match. Seth Rollins in the sick-ass white gear. I got a bunch of tags on social media. I always love when you guys do that, so that made me really, really happy. Just uh, just beautiful gear. I liked it. It looked like these kick pads, actually, come to think of it. The white, black, and gold right there, but this matchup was truly unbelievable. If you guys missed this match, you must go watch it. It was... We saw some shit we've never seen in Elimination Chamber. It was that damn good. So unpredictable. So fun. I thought that it would would be, but it blew my expectations out of the water. Damn good football game. You gotta go watch it right now. Just great stuff, but Austin Theory is still your U.S. champion, and uh, we'll see where we go from here. And for our main event, the WWE Universal Undisputed Championship match, Roman Reigns, the Tribal Chief, 900 plus day reign, taking on Samuel Zayn here in the main event of Elimination Chamber. Man, this crowd was electric. It was insanity. We all knew it would be. They were on fire for this match and for damn good reason man this one was just so fun man it really was a lot of fun they played up the crowd the entrances were epic fu roman chants the olays it was just such a fun adventure man just to be able to step back and see Sami Zayn transformer over the transform like in the last decade plus of seeing him come up through the ranks from you know the, the damn indies all the way up till now and just to see that witness that live and just see that growth. It's just so incredible, man. Unbelievable. And it reared its ugly head here in the matchup. Great back and forth. Great near falls in this matchup. It had all the things you love to see in a classic epic clash. You had the shenanigans. You had the near falls. You had the ref bumps. We got Jimmy Uso running out. We got Jey Uso running out. So Jimmy Uso shows up after some referee shenanigans and he super kicks the hell out of Sami Zayn and beats him down. Sami Zayn battles back. Some near falls again with some referees. Jay Uso eventually makes his way out there and he's trying to think. He ends up, so Sami Zayn's down and Roman Reigns is getting ready for that final shot and Paul Heyman hands him a chair and he picks it up and the, 
in. Jey Uso walks in front of Roman like, here I am, bro. And the crowd was there losing their minds. And Roman gives him the chair. And I thought for a second Roman was about to get played for a damn third time right here. I was like, oh my God, bro. Is he really going to th fall for this damn back to the guy again and get hit with a chair? But it didn't happen. But he kept mushing Jey's face and like getting in his face. And then Sammy attacked Roman. Roman moved out of the way. He spears Jey Uso, leading to another spear from Roman Reigns on Sami Zayn. Some more near falls, but eventually Roman Reigns does claim victor yet again. He does pin Sami Zayn to win. And I have a lot of mixed emotions about this. See, a lot of people really wanted him to win the matchup. I didn't think they'd ever give it to him. You know, I was thinking that the, the matchup all along was going to be Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. I guess there's still potential that we could see a triple threat. I think that that's possible, but it seemed like the crowd just kind of accepted that he lost. And they were heartbroken. They definitely were. But I think that uh, Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes is going to be the matchup. I think that that's what we're going to see. I think we are going to get the tag match. After the match was over, Jimmy jumped Sami Zayn again, and then we had Kevin Owens coming out. So Kevin Owens did come out to save Sami Zayn after the beatdown from Jimmy. So Kevin Owens did take out Jimmy. He got in the ring. He stunned Roman. He stunned Jimmy. He put Jimmy through the announce table. Pop-up powerbomb. Sammy, Sammy's music hits. We send the crowd home happy after the beatdown to the bloodline afterwards. But I know a lot of people were upset about this outcome. I kind of just saw this outcome coming, so it doesn't really upset me that much. I was already prepped for this. I figured this would take place. And now we just wait to see if we're actually going to get a triple threat. Are we going to get Are we going to get a tag team championship match? Is it going to just be Roman and Cody? We have a lot of questions to answer, but this show overall was very fun. Brock and Bobby let me down, and the Women's Elimination Chamber could have been a little bit better. But at the end of the day, it was an enjoyable show. The Men's Elimination Chamber in this main event were absolutely fantastic. If you guys missed out on these, you'd have to go check them out. But I had a lot of fun with the show. My overall thoughts on the show was a plus. I think it was a solid show. I'd give it a B to a B plus, I think. Very fun show overall. I had a ton of fun with it. And that's all you can really ask for on the road to WrestleMania, man. And we have passed our last stop on the road to WrestleMania. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'm getting out of here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at my damn toys. I'm getting the hell out of here. This Bloodline story has just really reminded me a lot of the pick fed, man. It just really hits me right in the feels, but I love you guys, man. Have a blessed one. You'll never